Hi, my name is David Vian. This is Joey Castro and Anna Cole. Today we're going to present our poster, which is titled Effective Variant Salt Concentration on TV Protease Production and Activity. As you may know, TV Protease is a protein that is very crucial in pro fusion protein cleavage. This is important if you're working in a lab that is altering genetic, uh, the, ge the genetic makeup of any uh, organism and then analyzing what proteins may come out of that uh, manipulation. However, the protein is known to auto-inactivate and show diminished activity levels. This means that maximizing its yield while maintaining high activity levels is particularly difficult. And it also means that the protein may cost on the order of $50 per 10 micrograms. Therefore, it may be in our best interest to determine what conditions produce the most TV protease while maintaining that high activity level that we desperately need. Uh, prior research has also shown that there are, there, are, there are recommended conditions in producing TV protease and one of those conditions is 200 millimolars of salt. We chose this uh, parameter to manipulate because salt is a known compound that is important in stabilizing protein when it's uh, undergoing its proper folding in, in, <clears throat> in its uh, uh, development. How, uh, at low concentration, salt is important in the formation of salt bridges between ionic residues. However, at high concentrations, salt may interfere in the active site between uh, ionic residues on the active site and the, uh, and the substrate of interest. Um, thus, we will be analyzing what salt levels are best for producing TV protease in the lysis and extraction buffers, which are important for the extraction of TV protease. Our Conditions range from 100 millimolars to 400 millimolars of salt, and we hypothesize that a lower concentration of salt in the lysis and extraction in the lysis and elution buffers will be better for producing more TV protease while maintaining high activity levels. We will do so by uh, what Joey will explain next. Thank you, David. Mm -hmm. Our methods include expression, purification, and then evaluation of our TV protease. We were given a sample of ampicillin-resistant E. coli from Dr. Candy's, which we grew over nigh an LB agar plate. Uh, <clears throat> we then incubated an LB broth and then grew to optimal density in a larger flask. We then harvested these cells using centrifuge. Uh, for our purification process, it involved using glass lysis beads to, res um, to resuspend the lysis buffer on ice. And then we mixed the lysis buffer and equilibrated it in nickel resin. We use nickel resin because the positive charge interacts with the histine tag on our TEV protease. Uh, we then use column to, uh, to catch the flow through of our, of our solution, then mixed with lysis buffer as well as imidazole buffer and to give us our six fractions, which we stored at four degrees Celsius until we were ready to evaluate. For our evaluation, we created a standard curve using Bradford say to measure the concentration of our fractions and we then used an SDS page to measure the, to determine the purity of our fractions. And now Anna Cole will describe our results. This is the graph of our standard curve using a Bradford assay to test the concentrations of the protein fractions that we had. We had six different protein fractions and only two of them lied within the curve. The two fractions that lied within had 22 micrograms and seven micrograms of, of protein. At this point, we weren't sure whether or not it was TEV protein or another type of protein, which we later found out during the SDS page. The other four fractions were beneath the curve, and so we weren't able to use them. They ranged as low as three micrograms, so we continued with the next two. The next two were measured on an SDS page to measure the size of the protein itself. It was measured against a standard right here, and the numbers represent the, the kilodaltons associated with that size. The accepted size of TEV is 25 kilodaltons. Since our two protein fraction lines align next to the 25 uh, kilodaltons, we now believe that our proteins are, are relatively pure. So we believe that while there are a small amount of protein, they are mostly TEV. Although we aren't sure whether or not they're active yet because we still have to do an activity assay using adenylase kinase um, substrate. After we do this, we will run the entire process again using 100 millimolar and 400 millimolar amounts of NaCl since we went through this whole process using the accepted value of 200 millimolar NaCl. Once we have the results of our three different run-throughs of all of this, 
we will determine which one results in the highest amount of active concentrations of TEV. This will help us determine which salt concentration is the best one to use for this process. Uh, thank you, and we would like to say to thank Dr. Cathanese and the Howard Hughes Medical Institute for helping us and funding this project.